What's going on, everybody? Welcome back. FantasyTeamAdvisors.com, bringing home the bacon, MLB DFS video. It is finally Friday. It is August 16th. We are back, and I have eight weeks off of work for paternity. I'm very excited. You should be, too. That means I can help out. I can look at these videos. I can dig in a little bit more. I can start on the NFL content. I do not go back to work until the middle of October very excited and we are so close to nfl season we can almost taste it but you guys are not here for that yet if you want to wait we'll talk about it in the discord discord link is down below we're going to talk about it we're going to maybe have an nfl weekly league maybe a dollar maybe five dollar league a week and we'll talk about that there but you are here for mlb if you're new to the channel welcome we have two giveaways every single day ways to win like the video be a subscriber and leave a comment if this video gets at least 50 likes you have a chance to win a free week of fta plus that's every sport we offer sports betting and dfs if this video gets 100 likes you have a chance at a free month which is a 30 dollars value 150 likes a chance at a 200 dollars yearly pass 200 or more likes a chance at a lifetime pass now this is friday we're very excited i'm going to do something different two lifetime passes will be given out if we hit 200 likes on this video or any video for this weekend. So if you know family and friends, you've got other accounts, get those likes up because we want to make you a winner. Second way to win, we will have somewhere in this video, I'll say a keyword. All you gotta do is type that keyword in and you can win a free week. Now you can win both of these. Both of these could be yours. All it is, is it is we randomize it here and that's it. So leave a comment, preferably with the keyword in it and you have a chance to win whatever pass we are giving away. So we're gonna check out from yesterday's video. We got a minimum of 50 likes on that, so we will run the giveaway anytime we have that happen. So good luck to all the people, and you can win every single day, and we've had multiple people win multiple times. Sergeant Saint has won multiple times before. All you gotta do is be a subscriber, hit the bell notification so you know when these videos go live and have a chance to win. So congratulations, email me, dfshelp1 at gmail.com. Uh, in the subject line, say 816 uh, daily winner, and then we'll get your and then your account on the website, and we'll get you set up there. And he had the keyword of energy, but we're gonna re-roll it, so he has a chance for this comment to be picked again with the randomizer. We've had it happen only one time in over a year and a half of doing this. Will it happen again today? Let's check it out. The winner of the free week from using the keyword is. Millie Rock 17. Congratulations, Millie. Email me. I know, I believe you have an account on the website. Email me there and we will get you set up. So, congratulations to both of you. You both won passes. You both can come back tomorrow and win it again. So, it's a, so we have 14 games today. We have an early game that we can't play. The, the Cubs game, normally Friday games are at Wrigley this time of day and it's just normal. We can't play this game. So, we have 13 games between the early slate and the main slate. And for some reason, there are two teams that aren't playing, which is one's Oakland, and I, I can't remember the other one. I don't know why they have a Friday off, but whatever. But we're going to break it down. So things we do a little bit differently, break it down a little bit differently than maybe what you're used to. If We're going to go through everything, all the pitchers, all the batters that we like, everything. At the end of this video, we're going to give you the top five pitchers that have the best matchups against teams that strike out the most. We call that segment Pitches Be Crazy. And then after that, we have the top t uh, top bats that have a 10 out of 10 matchup rating. So as the video goes on, we are running simulations. And through those simulations, we will see who have the best matchups. Yesterday, we only had one that had a 10 out of 10 matchup rating. So hopefully we have more than that this time. So stick around. Hope you learned something. If you need a summary of what we're talking about, the article for today is down below in the description of the video. That'll be there for you as well. So let's jump right into it the early game we have a, a early slate we do have some weather concerns here now it's early so we're we're waiting to see uh, but that is definitely something to look at but we've got kansas city at cincinnati going first game here now weather being a little bit of concern okay we got nick martinez we've got michael lorenzen we have great american small park it is a very small ballpark here and the ball will fly out of there as long as the weather is doing good. But let's take a look at both of the pitchers, how they've done, and any of the bats that we may feel suitable using in this matchup here. So, Michael Lorenzen making another start for Kansas City. It'll be his 
third start for Kansas City, coming off not very good. I mean, he's not really had success his past few starts. Did have an okay game against Detroit, but again, on DraftKings, when you're using a pitcher like this, you need... You need to have 20, 25 plus fantasy points out of both of your pitchers to feel comfortable enough to take down a GPP or even have a shot at it. He really hasn't done it. I don't like to take pitchers in this ballpark. And then you got Nick Martinez, 317 ERA, splits wise, has not faced Kansas City this year. Pitching at home, he's got a 441 ERA. Again, like he's had back to back really good starts on the road. But at home, 3.1, 16.6. And he's got to go up against Kansas City, who's one of the hottest hitting teams right now. I am probably off of both of these pitchers. I am looking strictly at the bats. If I were to look at Cincinnati bats at home versus Lorenzen, Jonathan India is batting 3-for-3 with a home run. Had two home runs. uh, Was it Thursday? Wednesday night, he had two home runs. Um, Now he's at home here. And then we just look at the bats. So some of the bats that have had success against right-handed pitching this year, Candelario, about 232, is under the uh, league average, but he's got 17 bombs against right-handed pitching. Ellie De La Cruz, 287 batting average, 16 home runs, a 924 OPS. Even if he doesn't hit a home run, he gets on base. He's stealing you bases, one or two bases. All of those are fantasy points. So those are two that I want in my lineup here. Will Benson, only batting 206, but he does do better against righties. Has 11 bombs there. Spencer Steer, batting 236, 15 home runs. Uh, a couple of cheaper options, possibly. Ty France with eight bombs against righties and TJ Friedel, eight bombs uh, with only a 14.1K percentage. So T- Friedel does not strike out much. If he is in there, he could be a sneaky option for a Cincinnati stack there. Kansas City bats against Nick Martinez. No one's hit a home run. No one's really facing basically one or two at bats total. But then we look at these bats Bobby Witt Jr., Salvador Perez, Vinny Pascatino. When I'm making a Kansas City stack, most of the time it's those three. But I need to get some Paul DeYoung in there. Um, I need to get a little bit of possibly MJ Melendez if we're looking for an outfielder. Or we could do Michael Massey, who's batting 264 against right-handed pitching. It'll all just be dependent on this weather. If this game gets played, I love a stack. I think I like Kansas City a little bit more. Would not be surprised if the over-under is very high in this one. And we see 10-plus runs in this game. Not taking the pitching at all in this game. Then we got the Yankees at Detroit. We've got uh, Garrett Cole. Going up against Herter. They believe it's going to be Herter. Um, he last pitched Saturday. Um, five innings there. The problem is Detroit is like one of those other uh, teams right now. It's day-to-day, and the, the starting pitcher could change at any time. Um, again, though, with Herter being a lefty, in my mind, I'm saying Yankees because, obviously, but they don't hit lefties, or they don't hit lefties very well. But this could be a day it changes. it. I do love Garrett Cole here. Um, he's coming off, I believe, his best start of the year. He had 10 strikeouts in that game. They lost that game 9-4 to to Texas. Uh, they just didn't have it. Um, but that's what we're looking at. 10, yeah, 10 strikeouts in that game, all for naught. Now he's got a great matchup here. He has good odds against uh, Detroit. I think they're batting like 177 against him and like 70 at-bats. Maybe. 77 plate appearance of 181. So they've had success. He's had success against them. If the weather isn't a concern, I love him here in this early slate, especially with there's just so many stud pitchers going today. It's wild how many. Eight, this kind of feels like opening day. Just all the all the stars are out pitching uh, today, which means the rest of the weekend might not have the best pitching matchup. So let's take advantage of this as we can. Um, depending on when you watch this video, I will have a video out um we will have mma going this weekend so definitely check out mma for saturday nascar on sunday we've already got pga that started on thursday we're very excited um moving forward we've got nfl soon we're not going to do preseason nfl because you know you never know when the starters are actually going to play how much they're going to play and i just don't want you guys throwing away your money but if i were to look at this one i am looking at the yankees bats against detroit i don't want anything to do with detroit just depends. Obviously, Aaron Judge with 300 home runs, fastest in uh, history to get to 300. He's on fire. Juan Soto was on fire in that series against the White Sox. Um, Glaber Torres has turned it on. The ones I'm probably not using, I'm probably going to fade Grisham if he's in there. I'm probably going to fade uh, Volpe until he just proves that he can do others. He just He's looking bad right now. And I'm probably going to fade DJ LeMahieu. But other than that, I think the entire Yankees lineup 
could be in store and ready to stack against or stack with. Next game, Washington at Philly is the next game. Don't overthink this one. It's Aaron Nola versus Patrick Corbin. Take the Philly bats against Patrick Corbin. Kyle Schwarber Mont just mashes lefties. Bryce Harper mashes lefties. Trey Turner mashes lefties. JT Romuto, uh, Nick Castellanos, Bryson Stott. Literally, Philly just feels like one of those teams where we, we stack different ones, multiple different stacks. I want nothing to do with Patrick Corbin. You can throw him in a tournament because, you know, everyone's going to, no one's going to do it. Don't waste your money. I don't foresee him doing anything against Philly. Um, splits wise, he's already faced him once this year, lost six innings, four in runs. The most surprising thing is he lasted six innings in that game. Looking at this, yeah, minus 1.6 against the Angels, 12.7, minus 15 against Arizona. Had a good game here, had a good game against Cincy. I do not trust it. Philly is a great team. I want nothing to do with Patrick Corbin. I want all things to do with Aaron Nola and Philly as a stack. Moving on, Seattle at Pittsburgh. This is a great matchup as well. Rain might be a concern, but we'll see. You got Paul Skeens going up against Logan Gilbert. I love both of these pitchers. I'm not looking at the bats in this one. Logan or uh, Paul Skeens has the best matchup of all pitchers. Seattle strikes out the most out of any team in the league right now. Paul Skeens dominates couple of bad games or you know not bad games but give a foreign runs against the Dodgers but still got 17.3 fantasy points so the Dodgers you know they're a really good hitting team splits wise he has not faced Seattle this year and as I said Seattle right now is the team that strikes out the most out of any team they strike out 10.27 times per game and on the road they actually strike out 10.10 so yeah I, I don't want Seattle bats I want skeins and I love Logan Gilbert here Logan Gilbert's got a great matchup here versus Pittsburgh. Both of these teams they're facing are in the top bottom five for strikeouts or top five for teams that strike out the most. So I don't want the batters in this one. I just want the pitchers. I love Paul Skeens. He is expensive. You could save 700 with Gilbert. You could do both of them if you think it's going to be a low scoring game, which I think it will be. Then the final game on this early slate, Arizona at Tampa Bay. You've got Ryan Nelson versus Ryan Pepio. Pepio on the IL, but... Yeah. Uh, sideline for past month due to infection is raining. I didn't realize he's been out that long. He has been out that long, over a month now. He dominated when he was playing, then had an infection in his knee. Um, 69 pitches in his only out uh, 3.1 innings. So, yeah, I could definitely see this being a um, workload management here. So, I don't know if I trust him. And then you got Ryan Nelson coming in. Game log wise, 28.1. Good against Philly, not against Pittsburgh. Great against Washington. Splits wise, he's not faced Tampa Bay this year. Tampa Bay is not a very good team. But on the road, he's got a 4.11 ERA, but that's still better than 4.95 at home. Early, maybe you throw him in because he is 6,000, so it does allow you uh, to go with Skeens or Gilbert. But honestly, I love Skeens, Gilbert, Nola, Cole. I don't trust Pepio, Lorenzen. I don't trust, basically, I don't trust anyone below Cole in this early slate. So it's one of those that those are just the chalk plays. I think I think that's what we do. Um, Ryan Nelson, I don't want him. Pepio probably going to be on some sort of pitch count. Then that looks, let's look at the Arizona bats against right-handed pitching. Jock Peterson batting eight, uh, 18 home runs, batting 290. Got Josh Bell, 12 home runs, batting 253. He hit, both of those hit lefty or righty pitches better. A. Eugenio Suarez, 13 bombs, 241 batting average. Corbin Carroll, 8 home runs, 235. These are what I'm looking at. Then you could always maybe go with a Lord Escurriel Jr. if he's in there. Maybe a Kevin Newman, Blaze Alexander. It really just depends if you're trying to stack a full Arizona stack and you can't fit the other ones in there because you want to go higher up with the two pitchers today. Completely understand that. Or if you don't go Skeens, which I love him. He's the picture of the video in the article for a reason. Maybe Garrett Cole and Logan Gilbert. Maybe Garrett Cole and Aaron Nolan. And you actually save a bunch of money. And then you could stack other ways on this slate here. And then Tampa Bay bats against Nelson. There's, you know, Chris Morrell has four at-bats against him. And Dylan Carlson has two. None win there with Tampa Bay. Honestly, I don't, I'm not looking at Tampa Bay bats. Ben Rortvet, 260 batting average. Um, three home runs. That's it. Chris Morrell, 200 batting average against right-handed pitching with 16 bombs. I'm okay with that. That's it. Like, I, I don't love um, 
I don't love the Tampa Bay Bats here. I'd rather go with Arizona as a stack. And that's the early slate. We are done. So, yeah, basically Garrett Cole and up for me with pitching. I don't trust the other ones. I'd love to stack in this game here. Early slate, I'm okay with it. Let's just – hopefully the weather will cooperate. Now we're getting to the main slate here. We've got eight games to go over. Weather, sh- as of now, looks pretty good. Weather does not appear to be a concern. So I'm very excited for that. Again, anything can change. But the pricing is weird. The pricing just seems off. Like, why is Spencer Schwellenbach the highest priced pitcher on the slate at 9,800? While Corbin Burns is lower. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, But yeah, we're still going to continue. We're going to persevere. We are going to rock and roll. So, looking at this, Boston and Baltimore is going. We've got Corbin Burns going up against Boston, who they do strike out. Um, And then it looks like it's going to be Josh Winkowski. Now, looking at this, he might be an opener. Now, again, this is kind of where don't 100% know where they're going to go. Um, we're to the part of the season where some of these teams that are kind of stinky, we'll put it that way, we'll use that word, uh, they're pitching sus, as the kids say. Um, if it is Winkowski, I don't like that. I'd rather use Baltimore bats. 100% on a Baltimore stack, and I'm looking at Corbin Burns because Boston strikes out the third most out of any team in the major leagues this year. So, honestly, the only Boston bats that I would look at would be Jaron Duran, uh, Rafi Devers, Willier Abreu, um, and maybe Connor Wong. Maybe. But I'm not taking, even if it is Winchowski, or if it's not, if it's somebody else, I do not want them. I want Baltimore bats. And honestly, it does not matter which bats. Just kind of wait for the lineup to come out, and let's see what our uh, simulations say. But I don't want Winkowski. Uh, I do want Corbin Burns, though. I will have exposure to Corbin Burns against this Boston team on the road. Next game, Miami at New York. We've got Rodeo Munez going up against Shamanaya. Now, we saw uh, New York Mets give up runs to Oakland. If you watched yesterday's video, I I said I loved Oakland as a stack. They put up, um, how many was it? I think it was... How many runs did Oakland put up? They put over five up. I think they put like seven, eight. Yeah, they put up over five. Uh, the stack worked out. Like we talked about the stack, and I said it, no one was talking about it. I said it was a little underowned. Hopefully, if you went with it, let me know if you guys went with an Oakland stack on Thursday, like we talked about in the video. But that being said, Munez actually has success against the Mets. Um, this year, two games started, 11 innings pitched. Only one earned run with 10 strikeouts in New York, which it, this is a this is a pitcher's ballpark. We do look at it. His away ERA is 474, so it is a massive ballpark. I don't mind him at 6600. Um, I'm probably fading the Mets bats. I'm looking at Munez there, and then we've got Sean Manaya. So Manaya comes in here. Never know what we're going to get with Manaya. He's got he's got the hair. Well, he has the hair in the picture. He doesn't have the hair in real life anymore. Um, but splits-wise, he's already faced Miami once this year, has one loss, one win, seven earned runs, five strikeouts, a 6.30 ERA, and only averaging 6.8 fantasy points per game against them. Not ideal in at, at all. Coming off a terrible game against Seattle, five walks in that game, only three strikeouts against a team that strikes out the most out of any team, a great start at St. Louis, a great start at Minnesota, not a good start against the Mets, negative points against Miami at Miami, five earned runs splits wise home games he does have a 381 era so he has actually been worse at home than on the road and i I think that probably continues today i think in this game i'd rather take a some sort of miami stack now again the miami team that hit him hard probably were all traded uh but jake Berger, i love jake Berger today would not be surprised we got a, a homer and fries out of him didn't mean to rhyme but wouldn't be surprised at a Jake Berger home run today. I, I kind of like Jake Berger over one and a half bases, but also if you want to do a home run parlay, I do not mind him in there whatsoever. Um, other than that, like Otto Lopez would be a, an option. If you're trying to stack Miami, Otto Lopez, Jake Berger, Xavier Edwards is probably what I'm looking at. 
Derek Hill, maybe if he's in there, 316 batting average with 14 home runs against left-handed pitching, will really just depend on who's in there. I don't love a Miami stack, but I like the three guys that we did. If you want it, that's a mini stack. So, uh, so that'd be a secondary stack on FanDuel if you're doing the 4-3 stack there. So I'm fading Manaya. I am looking a little bit at Munez. I am looking at Miami as a stack. I'm not really looking at the Mets bats right now. Minnesota at Texas is the next game on the docket. Got uh, Simeon Woods Richardson versus Andrew Haney. Uh, Never know what we're going to get out of either of these pitchers, but, you know, let's take a look. SWR, 378 ERA. Splits on the road actually has a worse ERA, 434. Has not faced Texas this year. Good good game against Cleveland, which they are a very good hitting team, but then nothing for a little bit. 21.1 against Philly is great. Texas is one of those teams where I like them at home more than I like them on the road. And that's kind of what I feel in this situation here. And then Andrew Haney coming in, 405 ERA, has not faced Minnesota this year. Generally, Minnesota hits lefties better. And that's kind of what I'm thinking here. I don't want Haney. Haney at home has got a 355 ERA, but I don't care about that. Um, you know, he's got that 17.7, but then there's other games where he hasn't done anything. So I'm kind of looking at... Minnesota bats here against lefty. So you guys know if you've been with us before, Ryan Jeffers against a lefty, love him. 245 batting average, six bombs against Andrew Haney. Or six bombs against right-handed pitching. Um, against Andrew Haney, the only batter that has a home run is Cal Farmer. Um, but other bats, Willie Castro against a righty I love. Royce Lewis is batting over 300. Byron Buxton, Carlos Santana, Manny Margot. Minnesota feels like that stack for me. I love them as a stack here against Andrew Haney. Just depending on the lineup that comes out, I do not mind. You're going to get a cheaper option with Manny Margot. Um, but just kind of be on the lookout for the lineup that does come out for Minnesota. And uh, I love them as a stack. I want nothing to do with Haney. I really don't want anything to do with SWR. Probably looking at, you know, Corey Seager, Josh Young, you could look at. Um, you could look at Nate Lowe a little bit. You could look at Ezekiel Duran, Carson Kelly if he's in there, Jonah Heim. I don't know if I love, I don't really love, I'm not feeling the Texas stack today, but Corey Seager's got to be in my lineup. Um, a couple of them I do not mind going up against SWR today. Next game, White Sox at the Astros. We've got Garrett Crochet going, who still, like, is he going to be on a, some sort of pitch count? Are they going to monitor his workload? Because they're already eliminated from, they were eliminated from the playoffs at the start of the season. They're not good. Um, they didn't trade him for a reason. Maybe they do it in the offseason. Maybe maybe he doesn't pitch deep into these games. It is Houston. They do hit lefties quite well. Um, for the most part, they hit lefties quite well. we got Garrett Crochet, 366 ERA. He's already faced Houston once this year. Got the loss, but went six innings. Three earned runs. Just did not have run support. Had 17.5 fantasy points. Um, that was back on... That was at home. Uh, back on June 19th. They lost that 4-1. to one. Um, He gave up three of the earned runs. His, again, the offense did nothing for him. Again, White Sox offense, not going to do much for him or any of their pitchers, for the most part, except for when they did against the Yankees on, um, was that Monday, Tuesday, whenever it was, Monday. Um, so, yeah, Garrett Crochet against Houston, He's got great electric stuff. I'm probably looking at Houston, though. I'm probably looking at Jose Altuve, Jordan Alvarez against lefties, batting 367 with six bombs against lefties. Um, Alvarez, Altuve, Yonner Diaz, Alex Bregman. I don't mind these guys. Uh, cheaper options, Mercio Dubon if he's in there, but I don't know if he will be. Jeremy Pena's bad 287 against left-handed pitching. I-, I could see that. So I'm not looking at the White Sox bats. I do not mind Spencer Aragetti for tournaments. I don't like him for cash. And outside, I mean, the only bats that you'd even consider with uh, White Sox would be probably Gavin Sheets, Andrew Vaughn, maybe Luis Robert Jr., but he's batting. Luis Robert Jr.'s batting. What is he batting? 200 on the year with 12 bombs. Against right-handed pitching, 201 with 11 bombs. So 11 of his 12 home runs have come against right-handed pitching. So you could look at those guys, but that's probably... I'm probably not going with a White Sox stack there. We have, next up, Cleveland at Milwaukee. 
we've got Gavin Williams going up against Aaron Savale. Gavin Williams on the road, um, point or zero point eight four ERA. He's great on the road. Uh, Milwaukee, they hit lefties better, uh, but Milwaukee's still a scary team sometimes at home. But I mean, his home and away splits are wild. Eight point six six at home, point eight four on the road. Gavin Williams for tournaments at sixty six hundred with his splits, I don't mind. Um, great game against Minnesota. They've only won up 200. Baltimore, obviously not a good game. Detroit, two times, great, great outing. So got a lot going for him. Uh, obviously was in the bullpen a little bit. Innings, hopefully he can go, you know, six plus innings here. Uh, but I do not mind him at all. Then Aaron Savali coming in, game log wise. One good game against Cincy. Bad game, bad game, bad, okay. Splits wise, going up against Cleveland. I don't love this matchup for him. I'm pro If I'm doing pitching in this game, I'm looking at Gavin Williams for tournaments, and I'm looking at Cleveland bats against Savale. I do not trust him. Um, the bats, obviously, Josh Naylor, Jose Ramirez make a lot of sense against uh, right-handed pitching. Uh, Jose Ramirez is actually better against left-handed pitching, but against right-handed pitching, still has 19 home runs. Um, I'd look at Andres Jimenez batting 264 against right-handed pitching. I look at Will Brennan batting 258 does better against righties than lefties. Again, it'll depend on who's in this lineup. Stephen Kwan still batting over 300 against right-handed pitching. Um, and then you could look at Noel batting 255 with four bombs. I'm fading Savale. I am looking at Gavin Williams for tournaments. I am looking at Cleveland bats and feel comfortable with that. Yeah, that's where I'm going at this game. Then we got the Dodgers at St. Louis. Um, next game on the docket. We have Robleski. It looks like it's going to be Robleski versus uh, Miles Michaelis. So Robleski coming in. Again, they've got a lot of uh, injuries with this pitching core. Game log really, you know, had a decent game against Boston. That's it. Splits wise on the road. Two games on the road, 422. I don't love him. And Michaelis, 531 ERA. Was against him against Kansas City last time. Um, Give up five earned runs. He's given up 20 earned runs in his last five games. Has not done well, and he's got to face the Dodgers. Absolutely not. Mookie Betts got the day off on Thursday. I think he comes back strong. Bats second. I love a Dodger stack here. Otani, Freeman, Mookie Betts. Um, Teoscar Hernandez you could look at. You could look at Jason Hayward going up against one of his former teams in the stadium that he had a lot of success in. You could look at him. Um, but he's only batting 194 against right-handed pitching, so I don't know about that. Gavin Lux has been turning it on, 252 batting average, seven home runs. You could look at that. Um, you could even look at Miguel Rojas if he's in there, 277 batting average against right-handed. So I want nothing to do with Michaelis. I want everything to do with the Dodgers as they stack. St. Louis bats against Robleski. I don't mind them either. Um, Will, Wilson Contreras, obviously, we're looking at him. Probably looking at Arenado a little bit. Paul Goldschmidt, I am looking at. Cheaper options, Burleson, Brendan Donovan, um, Tommy Pham. I don't mind those guys against uh, Robleski, if it is Robleski. Now, it's not confirmed, so definitely pay attention. Once all of these pitchers are confirmed, when we do our uh, sim- – we'll rerun simulations once all the pitchers are confirmed. So we'll see if there's any change with the 10 out of 10 matchup ratings. Uh, we'll rerun the projections for everybody as well. So definitely uh, don't go in thinking it's Robleski. But again, maybe it is, or maybe it's already changed. It depends on when you guys watch this video. Let me know down below, what when do you guys normally watch this vi- these videos? Like what time during the day? I'm very curious if it's like a certain peak hour time that people watch. Like I know some people listen to this on their way to work. Um, but like when do you guys listen to this? Then before we get to the last two games, I want to say the key word for today is Friday. It is Friday. We're excited, but it is Friday. Yes, it is. It is Friday. Let's have some fun. And today's sponsor, as always, moving forward, Outlier.bet. Outlier.bet is the first sports betting super app. If you want to see it in action, Check back like three videos when we went over a daily MLB bets video. Um, and just kind of, they've got two different two different things. So the link to sign up to them is down below. If you use that link down below and you sign up, go through a seven-day free trial and actually pay the $20 for the month, 
send us an email with proof and we're going to give you a free month of FTA plus then they have a pro version with a ton more that you can look at $130 for a month if you sign up using that and actually pay for it we're going to give you three months free of FTA plus on top of whatever you paid that is already a $90 value on top of it so good luck thank you so much to outlier for sponsoring these videos thank you to outlier for checking in on us and just having a fantastic platform to use we break it down we are using these games on here the games tab to help you guys out as well so outlier.bet is the website make sure to check out our uh, today's article as well so last two games on the docket we've got san diego at colorado it is a coors game so the, they're you know going to be expensive matt waldron going up against cal quantrill now, it's really hard to want to take these pitchers in Coors, and we'll kind of look at it why. But looking at Matt Waldron, he's got some great stuff. He's got those knuckleballs that he can have success against. He did face Colorado two starts ago, 5.2 innings, seven strikeouts. That was in San Diego. Splits-wise, he's already faced him twice this year, only given up two earned runs total, 23.5 fantasy points. At 7,800, I don't mind him at all. But be very cautious because it is Coors, but he's got a nasty knuckleball. As long as he can get that knuckleball to knuckle and it, the altitude doesn't mess with it, I love this matchup for him here. Um, will depend on the weather, the wind, and if it's just hot and humid and that knuckleball doesn't knuckle, could be disaster for him, in, especially in Coors. But it is going to be very expensive for all of the bats there. Then the next one up is Cal Quantrill. Looking at his splits, at home he's got a 3.95. He's actually better at home than on the road. He's already faced San Diego twice this year. 10.1 um, innings, 400 runs, 7 strikeouts, 11.5. 11.5 is not enough, um, but he did just face San Diego his last start um, for whatever reason. Okay, so, so they pushed him back because he did have soreness in his right forearm. That's a problem. That's a red flag. He's had 11 days or 12 days since his last pitching. They pushed him back, and he had forearm soreness. I could see him getting scratched before the game, or I could see him go and get forearm soreness and be out. So this is definitely one to monitor. Probably looking at San Diego bats here, not looking at Cal Quantrill. We'll look at Matt Waldron and San Diego bats over Cal Quantrill or the bullpen. If you guys want to see what I'm talking about, go to MLB tab. Go down to the bullpen stats. It's going to show you how bad this bullpen is. So let's say, and I'll show you, this is just a free preview. I mean, this is on the website. It's completely free. You can click on it. Again, clicking on the ads on these videos, buying some merch, clicking on ads on the website, all of that helps out the channel. But you can see Colorado has the worst bullpen in the majors. Um, how many? They've given up 500 hits, 287 earned runs, 1.58 whip, 59 home runs. So even if Cal Quantrill you know, goes three innings, this bullpen comes in, could spell disaster, especially for San Diego. So give me all the Jackson Merrill. Give me all the Jackson Merrill in this one. Give me Donovan Solano. Give me Manny Machado. Just give me a San Diego stack against Cal Quantrill slash this terrible bullpen. Count your money. But they are going to be expensive because they're superstars on this team and it is Coors. So we got it. That's the only problem with this one. But I think you might be able to find some value in pitching like a Munez or a, a Matt Waldron. And we could pay for uh, some bats there as well. Then the final game, Atlanta at the Angels going up. Now, this is what I don't understand, but Spencer Schwellenbach being the highest-priced pitcher on the slate, okay, even above Corbin Burns is weird to me. Whatever. He's had good games. Like, he's got a 3.95 ERA. Splits-wise, he has not faced the Angels this year. Pitching on the road does have a better ERA, but it's still 3.79. Um, I don't mind him, but I'm, I'm, I don't understand why he's this high-priced. It's very weird to me. But whatever. Um, I'll have a little bit of exposure to him because the Angels are bad. But if you want to, um, because a lot of a lot of people that play DFS, maybe they're called fish. They don't know what they're doing or they just, you know, kind of build lineups nonchalantly. Might see like, oh, he must have a good matchup because he's the highest priced and go from there. So if you want to look at Angels bats against him, just to be contrarian, Logan O'Hoppy batting 277 with 12 bombs against right-handed pitching. Um, Matt Theis batting 272 with two bombs. Uh, they did just release Willie Calhoun, so he's not on the team. Nolan Shanuel, uh, batting 256 with nine bombs. Zach Nito has 14 home runs against right-handed pitching. Taylor Ward has 13 home runs. So those would be the bats that I would look at if I'm going to stack the Angels. 
against Schwellenbach. And then the Angels are throwing out Jose Soriano. Game log wise, he's actually had back to back really good starts. Had a bad game against Oakland, which doesn't make sense. And then good starts here. Um, Atlanta does strike out the fifth most out of any team that is currently playing tonight. Um, he has not faced Atlanta this year. We've got so Jorge Soler might be on the IL or he might he's out of the game. So Michael Harris is leading off. I do love Atlanta as a stack. Um, Soriano has the fifth best matchup though tonight for pitches be crazy. But I mean, I'm still looking at Matt Olson. I'm still looking at Austin Riley. Michael Harris leading off gives me a lot of value there. Jared Kelenic, uh, Ozuna with 30 bombs, batting 290 against righties. I don't mind him. But if you want to go contrarian, Soriano for tournaments, wouldn't fault you at that at all. There you have it. That is the breakdown. That is every game, early slate, main slate, pitchers, batters, everything. And if you're still with us, we're about to do pitches be crazy. Let's go. Number one pitcher today. Paul Skeens, Seattle strikes out the most. Seattle strikes out 10.27 times per game. On the road, they strike out 10.10. Number two is Matt Waldron. Colorado strikes out second most, 9.8 times per game. They actually strike out more on the road, but they still strike out 9.12 times at home. Corbin Burns versus Boston. Boston strikes out 9.69 times per game. On the road, Boston strikes out 9.79, so they're worse on the road. Number four is Logan Gilbert at Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh strikes out 9.3 times per game. Actually, at home, they strike out 8.53, so that might be one that, you know, maybe they don't get to that number, but Pittsburgh still strikes out against right-handed pitching. And then Jose Soriano versus Atlanta here. Um, Atlanta strikes out 9.2 times per game. On the road, Atlanta strikes out 9.11. So they are they do strike out more on at home, but those are your top five. Paul Skeens, Matt Waldron, Corbin Burns, Logan Gilbert, and Jose Soriano. Pitches Be Crazy is done. Now, all of the batters that have a 10 out of 10 matchup rating today. And let me tell you. We have fourteen times as many batters today than we did yesterday and the joke there is that we had one batter so we have 14 batters 14 times one is 14. anyway number one on the slate ellie de la cruz versus michael lorenzen two is jonathan india three is kyle schwarber four is francisco lindor five is jd martinez six is brandon nimmo seven jose ramirez eight stephen kwan nine alex bregman ten Corey seager 11, Jesse Winker, 12, Mark Vientos, 13, Jeff McNeil, and number 14, as of right now, Pete Alonso versus uh, Rodieri Munez. Now, I like Munez as a pitcher today. So we don't always have to agree with these, um, but those are your 14 as of now. Definitely depends on when you check this video, but could have been updated since then. And that's what I've got. Long video, I get it, 38 minutes. If you need a summary of it, the link is down below for everything. The article for today, the updated link to the Discord, I've put that in there down below. We've got it there for you. Go check that out. The link to Outlier, go sign up to Outlier. Go through everything. We're going to give you free content if you guys sign up and pay for Outlier.bet, our amazing sponsor to these videos. So that's what I've got in this video. Have a fantastic Friday. Good luck today. We'll be back tomorrow saturday and sunday videos usually murder in views and likes so come back tomorrow get those likes up get a chance at a free two passes to a lifetime pass if we can get to 200 likes so good luck today and as always let's bring home some bacon peace